the fact that not all cold is created equal is a weird sciencey fact that boggles, well, some people's minds. I'm from Minnesota. And every time you tell people that who are not from Minnesota, they almost always either mention their aunt or cousin or whoever the fuck family member they have who lives here because everybody's got a family member from Minnesota. Or the cold. It's usually the cold first. Or the one time they went to camp here. And to be fair, it does get cold here. I mean, occasionally Minnesotans go visit Hoth in February to warm up. And it gets cold enough to do shit like this on the greatest of the Great Lakes and cold enough to inhibit our judgment to say, yeah, we should go walk out there and take pictures while those things are moving. But as I said, not all cold is created equal, and despite Minnesota having the coldest place in the continental United States up at International Falls, the coldest I've ever been, like physically, has not been in Minnesota. Now, if you ever look at your weather app, you'll notice that it has a real temperature and a feels-like temperature. Like, this is mine today where it's 20 degrees out here. A lovely day, but apparently it feels like 14, and they're full of shit. It does not. And some of you probably know what that feels-like temperature actually means, and some of you may not, but it's basically just wind chill. But if the wind chill makes it feel colder, then isn't it just colder? And the answer is no. See, you need to be living, or at least warmer than ambient temperature, for a feel-like temperature to feel like something, or have any effect on you. And the biggest factor for a feel-like temperature in the winter is the wind. Just ask any Minnesotan, they'll tell you. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for that gosh darn wind now, would it? See, your body needs to maintain a very specific temperature so, you know, you don't die. And it's very good at doing that. It's called homeostasis, something Republicans are trying to ban because they're only a fan of heterostasis. Basically, your body burns calories from the food you eat and creates warmth to keep you at a very specific temperature. However, it can only do that so quickly to maintain your temperature because your body has a lot of surface area that that heat can escape through. That's why when you put on clothes, it helps keep you warmer. It slows that heat escaping. But even when the temperature is far below the 98 degrees Fahrenheit that your body needs to be, like it is today at 20, your body does a really good job at producing enough heat to keep you warm. I'm not even shivering right now. So there's a certain amount of time I could be out here at this temperature dressed like this without getting hypothermia. But air moving over a surface carries heat away much quicker than ambient air. That's why in the middle of summer, when you're sweating your balls off, you go spread eagle in front of a box fan and it cools you down. It's also how the radiator in your car works and how blood Blowing on hot food makes it scald your tongue for the next bite slightly less. Still scalds it though, because you know, you never wait long enough, do ya? So that's basically what wind chill means. Despite a higher ambient temperature, that cold air moving over your body means that your body is losing heat at the rate of a temperature much colder than actual ambient temperature. But hey, most places have wind, right? So if the coldest that I've ever been is not here in Minnesota, but in the mountains of Northwest Tennessee and Southwest Virginia, which arguably has less wind than the Great Plains, what gives with making the cold different and why I'd rather be in Minnesota at zero than Virginia at 35. Well, as Minnesotans will tell you in the summer, it's not the heat, it's that gosh darn humidity. The same is true in the winter. Up here, our humidity gets freeze-dried right out of the fucking air. But other places that are considerably warmer than here but still not warm in the winter aren't so lucky. See, humidity makes every temperature feel worse. We're all really familiar with hot, humid summers. Your body cools itself by your sweat evaporating. That evaporation dissipates heat, but for that evaporation to happen, it has to have something to evaporate in. Into. Now, if the air is dry, like out in the desert, that's why you can be at 110 and not feel so hot because your sweat is evaporating very quickly and cooling you down. But in the sweltering balls glued to your thigh heat of summer in the south or August in Minnesota, the high humidity means the air is already so laden with water that your sweat has no place to evaporate to, and that makes you hotter. But in the winter, that humidity does the opposite. Water is an excellent conductor of heat. It's why it's used in your motor, in your car to cool it down, and it's why your body uses sweat to cool it down. But in the winter, you're not sweating and you don't want to be cooled down. But the humidity in the air doesn't fucking care that you're shaking like Pete Hegseth after three hours without a drink. So even without the wind, that moisture is doing an excellent job of transferring that heat from your body into the cold air. And while you can easily add layers and dress to keep the wind out and you can step inside and warm up quickly when the humidity isn't very high, it's pretty hard to dress to keep wet air away from your skin. And this is why that gross wet winter weather in parts of the South it just feels like it chills you to your bones and even when you go inside where it's warm you can never quite warm up is different and feels a hell of a lot colder than 20 degrees out here in Minnesota right now where I'm very comfortable in just a sweatshirt. And it's why sometimes even though it's 10 degrees when there's no wind and the sun comes out you'll find Minnesotans doing stupid shit like thirst trap photo shoots or riding your snowmobile in a bathing suit because well the winter's long, guys, and, and we gotta find something to do. And the fact that the cold created in the chilliest crevices of our country can be more comfortable even without a coat than you might conject, well, that 
is pretty mind-boggling. 